Hey everybody, Dr. Dan here. This week we're going to talk about the railroad and it's a fascinating history. So the railroad in the United States really takes off between 1830 and 1840. That's the time when there was lots of expansion and there's two reasons for that. First of all, uh, as you may know, you know, railroads really started in England and kind of migrated to the U.S. The technology migrated to the U.S. and, and the U.S. was in a real recession in the uh, 1830s. So when the 1830s passed, the 1840s came, the economy was getting stronger, so there was railroad expansion and it expanded quite a bit. Now, you're going to do a reading this week called America on Track. It's a chapter out of a book and the author is going to talk about this notion of disruption. So he's going to talk about uh, disequilibrium actually, but it's the same as disruption and it's similar to uh, the way the internet changed things, the way the telephone changed communication uh, in the 1880s. So it's a real disruptor because if you think of transportation prior to 1840, it was all canals, so it was really limited to where there were canals and bodies of water. And then the other way to ship goods or ship people was on roads, which were not like the highways we know today. They were crude trails, basically, with horse-drawn um, you know, carts. So, so the railroad was revolutionary because it was dependable, it could go long distances, it could go incredibly fast compared to those other means of trans transportation, and it, it wasn't limited to waterways. So it really opened up the country. Um, the country really expanded, especially in the east, with the advent of the railroad. So um, this week, uh, this reading is interesting because at the beginning of the reading, I think on page 93 or so, um, you're going to read about how crude the railroad was when it started from a technological standpoint. The author talks about basically being, you know, stagecoaches with steel wheels on rails. So um, not the technology that you think of today when you think of railroads. The other things that that we need to pay attention to is the fact that um, you know, there was no safety on railroads, so there was no crossings, there was, there was no warnings, there was no fencing between the tracks, so there was a lot of uh, accidents. There's a book uh, called Notes on Railroad Accidents from 1879 that describes all of these horrific accidents where people were getting hit, um, you know, livestock was getting hit, and there were train collisions all the time. So it, it, it definitely evolved to what it's become today. It didn't always start out with the uh, safety mechanisms built in. So that's kind of the early technology part. As you read through that, you're going to read an article by um, uh, Alfred Chandler. And Chandler argues that the railroad was the precursor to the modern organized corporation in the United States. So he's going to point to the railroad and also the telegraph, which was commercialized around 1847 um, as the first sort of system technologies that, that necessitated uh, organization of a corporation. In other words, you had to have administration, you had to have managers, uh, and, and oftentimes these operations were far flung. So not only did you have a headquarters, but you also had distance lo distant locations where people had to work. So Chandler argues that the railroad and the telegraph to some extent were really the, the, the precursor to the modern corporation in that there was a manager class, there was a salary class, uh, there was a working class, and that these different roles uh, within the railroad really mirrored what was going to happen later with modern corporations in a number of different industries. So that's kind of the Chandler reading for this week. Um, there's, there's some cool stuff in this reading, like there's a poem by Walt Whitman, um, and, and I want you to pay attention to that because when we see these cultural artifacts, like poems, like paintings, that sort of thing, then it means that the technology has become part of the culture. So, you know, I don't know how many songs there are or poems there are written about the internet, but I know that if you go back and look at railroads, and automobiles for that matter. There are a number of poems, there are a number of songs. You see these technologies painted in paintings. So it, it starts to show how culture embraces these different technologies and, and starts, to, starts to create art around the technologies. And it's an interesting thing to look at when you're diving into the history because you suddenly realize 
what an impact these technological advances uh, have on the way uh, people write and the way they live and what they think about through these cultural artifacts. So pay attention to that poem. It's, it's pretty cool and we'll be looking at some uh, paintings and other artwork in later modules that incorporate technology in the background. So pay attention to that. Uh, the other thing we're going to read this week is kind of different but really fun. It's a reading about uh, railroad gauges. So the gauge is the distance between the two rails on a railroad track and in the United States it's four foot eight and a half inches and it's really interesting because the author who is a historian out of Stanford I believe talks about why the country settled on a railroad gauge of four foot eight and a half inches. It's interesting not only because it's a fun read but sometimes the systems that that we take for granted uh, are based on arbitrary standards, not the best technical standards. So in the case of the railroad gauge, it's really interesting because prior to the Civil War, all the railroads had different gauges. In the South, it was like a five-foot gauge. Some railroads in the North and in the East were, were what they are today, four foot, eight and a half inches. And it's not really the best and most efficient way to make a railroad. Actually, um, uh, you know, technologists will argue that a six-foot gauge is more efficient because you can, you can have a bigger engine, it runs things more efficiently. Um, but the author of this particular article goes back and tries to determine why the four-foot, eight-and-a-half-inch gauge is what the U.S. settled on. And there's a couple of interesting facts behind that. First of all, since the railroads really started in England, you have to go back to England. And if you do, you find out that their gauge is four-foot, eight-and-a-half inches. Now, why does that matter? Because the historian then goes back to find out why British rails are four-foot, eight-and-a-half inches, and he traces it back to a mine and mining in England, coal mining in England, where the carts had that same gauge and then traces it back farther where some people say or speculate that uh, Roman chariots had a four foot, eight and a half inch gauge or, or distance between the wheels. And you can go to Pompeii and you can see some uh, Roman ruins and you can actually see the roads where there are still ruts in the rock um, uh, that measure four foot, eight and a half inches. And the author speculates, some people believe that was the width of, uh, or the, the distance of Julius Caesar's stride. Two strides was four foot, eight and a half inches. So I don't know whether that's true or not. I think he pretty much uh, discredits that idea, but it's interesting how these things are arbitrary. So when you look at the U.S. prior to the Civil War and a little bit after the Civil War, Railroads were not interchangeable. One company might have had a four foot, eight and a half inch gauge. One company might have had a five foot gauge. So railroad locomotives, railroad cars couldn't run on each other's tracks. They weren't compatible. And, you know, we talked last week about the American system of manufacturing. We talked about the advantages of standardization. Here's a prime example of standardization in the country. So eventually, after the Civil War, all railroads began to settle on the gauge that we have today, which is four, eight and a half. And, um, you know, you can ask yourself the question, is this really something that came from, you know, Julius Caesar's uh, stride? Um, or is it something because some miner somewhere set up tracks that width and it just kind of took over the world when it came to railroads? Um, something to think about, a really fun read, and I think it teaches us that you know, a lot of the standards we take for granted today started as arbitrary standards. And uh, you know, it's the same with the way we broadcast TV. Our cell phones are different in the U.S. than they are in Europe. Uh, again, arbitrary standards or different standards uh, that took hold in one place, but maybe not in the other. So um, enjoy the readings for this week. The railroad's really an important part of the growth of the country. Obviously, the expansion west you know, was because of the railroad. Uh, think about the dates. So 1830, 1840 is when railroads really start to grow in this country, but it wasn't until, um, you know, 1869 that the Transcontinental Railroad was completed. And, you know, so that was the first time you could get on a train in New York City and go all the way to San Francisco. And so after the Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869, uh, you've probably seen the picture of them driving the last spike at uh, Promontory Point in Utah. Um, it runs 
right around uh, parallel to Interstate 80 if you drive across the country. Um, after the railroads spanned the country in 1869, then the expansion of the country took off. So, you know, whether it was people who were raising cattle in Oklahoma or in Nebraska or raising grain in Kansas, now with the railroad there was an efficient way to ship those goods and services around the country. So I would argue it's probably one of the most important technological developments in the history of this country. Um, you're going to have a question on the discussion board and you're going to argue whether the railroad or the internet uh, was more important, so think about that. But I think in the context of the country, in the context of expansion, uh, the railroad, for me at least, wins hands down. So everyone's doing a great job in class. Keep up the good work. I love working with you guys. You have some really good posts on our discussions. And if you need anything, reach out to me. You know my email, my phone number, 419-345-7220. Have a safe week. Take care. Bye-bye.